All right, guys, welcome back to Review Our Review, the second episode. The second one. Week two. Week two, guys. We made it through one week. We, we ma- should make it another one. We should be able to make it at least yeah. another week. Guys, thank you so much for all the kind words on the first one. We had a lot of fun with it. Nice to see that you guys had a lot, a lot of fun with it as well. Um, if you're not already, I think you guys figured it out, but like us on Facebook. You'll get all of our videos there. Subscribe to our YouTube channel down there. Mm-hmm. Uh, follow us on Twitter at WrestleRumors. Or just go to WrestlingRumors.net for all your wrestling needs. And all of our vids will pop up right there as well. It's really that simple. Follow Sam on Twitter at LadyNexus13. Follow me on Twitter at AdamDaily13. Now, one thing that we did forget to talk about. Now, we are reviewing our review from August the 10th. Uh, was it Monday was Night Raw? Yep. Uh, so, it was uh, August 10th. Daniel Bryan's big return. Um, and interestingly enough, all the comments that we got really revolved around two subjects. The Divas Revolution... Uh, and Ambrose and Roman Reigns, which I love. I, I love. And that shows that as much as they're hyping Lesnar and, and Undertaker, which is going to be great, there's still other stuff for us there's to be exci- excited about. excitement for other stuff. Yeah. Right. And, and at least a way for us to fantasy book mm-hmm. and just have fun with it and stuff like that. So a um, cu- couple things. And yes, thank you. I'm glad so many called me out on this one. Um, I got to give you guys props first of all. Uh, uh, Banished Sloth. Yes, it was not so. I kept calling them the submission sisters instead yes, of the submission you did. sorority. Why didn't you correct me? I wasn't thinking. I kept saying Same. BCP and it's PCB. We also got corrected. Yeah. Yes, thank you. We got clarification on that. But um, so uh, thank you, uh, Banished Sloth, and also thank you. Who else called me out on that one? Um, because uh, oh, you been called been me out on that twice. Yeah. So thank you on that. Yeah, that that's one that. And, and you know, when I watched it on the rewatch, I was like, man, I know. They're going to lay into me for this one. So thank you for, for proving your proving me right. Thank you. Um, yes, it was the submission <laughs> sorority. Um, which, by the way, guys, if you're watching this, you know that the conspiracy was to Google it. So normally we would say kids don't Google it. You mm-hmm. probably shouldn't be a kid if you're watching this anyway because we're a little more uh, edgier than, than, I guess, other shows. So, um, hell, for the fun of it, Google it. I don't know. I Googled it. You Googled it, Googled it, it really, quick. It really wasn't that fun. This girl, she Googled, Googled it before I did, or alphabeted it before I did. I did. Didn't get that joke? Immediately, whenever I said, hey, it Alphabet, takes you to a bunch of Google. porn sites, I was like, okay, I gotta see what kind of porn sites this is taking them to. Oh. And just say, it was a certain genre. Jeez, jeez, jeez. All right, so first, let's start with... Um, let's start with, we actually did have one, uh, involving Kevin Owens and Randy Orton and Cesaro. Shreds for Life Man, he said he stopped watching after Orton won the triple threat. Way to build new stars in WWE. So there was a definite letdown. There's a definite letdown that, you know, that, that Orton got in there. Um, Rob said, you know, uh, just wait for the incredible match, uh, you know, it's, that Owens and Cesaro is going to have at SummerSlam. Which I also agree with. And, and the one thing I'll say is I do think Orton in this situation was the right move. I don't know. What do you think in it? Because I know we both, I wanted Cesaro, you wanted Owens. At the end of the day, I think it's it was about keeping them at a level playing field. Yeah, I definitely think that Orton was the safe bet in that situation. But And keeping Owens and Cesaro, like you said, at an even playing field going into SummerSlam. Here's where I do completely 100% agree with Straight Edge Man, though. Um, or Straight Edge for Life Man. Here's, here's where I got to agree. Especially the next day, you know, we hear these reports of, uh, you know, we don't know where it came from. You know, uh, everybody's shooting arrows, including myself. And we, you know, so we don't, we all have our own opinions. But, you know, Randy Orton delivered out the line, hey, Kevin Owens looks like, you know, uh, did you lose some weight or, you know, so whatever he said. Just Whether it was gain, some gain, gain some more weight or lose some weight, however he said it. But basically, you know, taking jobs at Kevin Owens and, you know, and almost saying that they just don't, this is more... This is just more piling on to Kevin Owens' look, saying that they really don't have anything for him going forward because of his look. Sam, do you think there's any legitimacy to that, or are we, is it misdirected hostility, hostility at this point? Um, I'm very opinionated on the matter. Uh, if you guys follow me on Twitter, I, you know I, I gave my opinion there. Sam? I can definitely see that being the case. But I can also see why that would be ridiculous, seeing as how, I mean... Just look, there have been fat dudes in wrestling all the time. Dusty Rhodes, who just passed well, away, was always overweight. I wouldn't even say that not, Kevin Owens not is not a fat, muscular though. dude. Well, he's not really that fat, but I mean, he's not like a cut dude with like eight abs and like giant fucking biceps. But he's, when you he looks like an average dude. When you think about it, any wrestler, superstar, 
that has ever gotten over that isn't that mold, Mick Foley, CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, um, let's uh, help me get some names here, Sam. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it, at one point, Rey Mysterio, although that was the wrong time to piggyback off of Rey Mysterio's championship, but eventually Rey should have gotten a championship. Mm-hmm. Um, Jericho? Jericho. These have all happened because of fan outrage of, okay, enough. Mm-hmm. These are the people that entertain us. And those are the guys that never had to look. Him and Mick, What's the difference between him and Mick Foley? Nothing. And look at how long it took them to give the championship to Mick Foley. Yeah. Mankind, McFoley, you know, whatever we're, we're calling him now. But look how long, and it took the fans, really, and this is during the Attitude Era, but pre-internet trolling and this and that and Twitter and, and, and the, the, the whatever is, else is out there. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's just, and, and, and on the second line, you know, w- formerly working in corporate America, I will say this, uh, working in corporate boardrooms, and I don't care what industry I was in, guys, corporate America is corporate America. There is an image they want you to have. Um, I was told uh, that, and listen, guys, I was uh, at a very lo- low level. I had people underneath me, but again, this is this is the reason why I'm making this analogy. They're superstars on a global scale that you know we we attach ourselves to for one reason or another. So the appearance shouldn't matter. In corporate America, it does. I had people working under me. This is just I'm the, I, work, I sold I sold phones for a living, guys. Um, and I was told that there was two people that worked with me. I was I was the one that was supposed to tell them to lose weight coming from up above. I was told that there was a girl that I had to work with that I was told either that she was to get a hysterectomy or I was to fire her because her performance was bad and that's why. These are all things that happen in any corporate structure and it sucks. And that's why I do believe that there's a lot of roadblocks stacked in front of Kevin Owens. And I don't care. People can say, well, you're comparing one thing to the other. There's a reason why I'm making the comparison. If in low-level retail, quote-unquote, if the people are telling you um, they need to lose weight, they need to lose weight, they need to lose weight, you don't think there's brass in WWE that are saying, well, we can't put them on TV because how are we going to cross-market uh, How are we going to cross market a slob in shorts? And that's exactly what I think certain powers that be feel in corporate America. And I think that's the, uh, that's the saddening part for me. Well, look at the guys that share like the same body type as Kevin Owens, like, say, a Tensai and a Brodus Clay. They ain't around. You know, there might be a Brodus reason for that. Clay they just was don't booked like that as a type. monster, and then they made him come out and shuck and jive for people. Mm-hmm. Um, it's and whether whether listen, it's one of those things, guys. There is an image that they want people to have, and it takes the fans to really get so. At the end of the day, I think that the only way that we can keep momentum behind Kevin Owens is keep behind Kevin Owens. Don't let don't let WWE brass or the rumors or this or that just stay behind them because eventually they're gonna cave. Yeah. We do ultimately have the ultimate voice, and I think that's what pisses off a lot of people that are either insiders or even inside WWE mm-hmm. or whatever the case may be. Ultimately, at the end of the day, it is our show, and and you know whether it takes us an entire year to get there, mm-hmm. and it's Daniel Bryan finally getting his championship, or Roman Reigns not getting the championship, would that was the big you know yeah. no, you know you know, and they just got got rid of that by pleasing everybody and giving it to Seth Rollins. Uh, you know, if you look at the past couple WrestleManias, at the end of the day, we've gotten what we've wanted. Yeah. You know, um, well we're so. Uh, well, twenty. I don't want to say three because twenty nine was a little. Maybe maybe uh, that was a little. I I, I don't know if Roxena two was necessary. No, I don't think anybody wasn't. wanted that. Okay, so maybe the past two years though. But it shows that our voices are influential. So guys, you know all the reports that are out there. This that I think, in my personal opinion, just the best way is just stay like we did with Daniel Bryan, stay like we did with CM Punk, like Cesaro, like Mick Foley back in the day. You know. There are certain guys that we just have to keep letting them know this is who we want. And if we have to do it with Kevin Owens, I personally am not going to stop. Okay. You? I'll, I'll give are you that. giving up? No. I will never I give up. I thought it was Kevin never Owens. give up. Never give up. I thought it was hustle, Owens. loyalty, respect. <laughs> I thought it was you can't see me. No. You can't see me. <laughs> you can't see me. Um, all right. So, but that's, I don't But what do you think? Do you think, though, that, do you think that people are just overreacting? And do you think that, you know, it, it's just. I'm just going to say it's it's a little fishy if you look around and see and compare his body type to other superstars and see where those other superstars have ended up quickly. It's like okay. Yeah, Tensai, Brodus Clay. 
anyone really with that type of body type. And remember, guys, I mean, Rusev is another guy, you know, for all intents and purposes. I wouldn't put Rusev in that category. S- but similar, though, but let's not, not their cut and mold dry. I mean, a husky guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and they originally were going to bring him in with a comedic angle. Yeah. So, mm, I it's almost like he was going to replace Brodus Clay. I just as hope, like the. I just hope that they don't screw up Kevin Owens. That would be terrible. Mm-mm-mm. All right, so let's see. We here's what we have. Um, and I'm going to start with some of the Sam. I'll leave it up to you. Um, divas, women, as I like to say. Um, or are we going to talk about Ambrose and Roman Reigns? Divas. Divas first. All right. Uh, so first, I'm going to try and blend these as much as possible. Justin says, hey guys, you think the Black Widow, AJ Lee, will ever wrestle in the WWE again? Uh, and by the way, he does think that Nikki breaking the record is an absolute joke, and he knows that you also do as well. <laughs> um, now, do you, Justin, thanks for that, brother. Um, now, Sam, do you think uh, that AJ will ever wrestle again? No. I don't think she'll go back to wrestling. I don't think so. No. Um, I think she's done. You know what, though? I It's... I always say never say never with these things anymore. I'm um, saying never. It's I'll leave it to the that one percent chance that there might be. Um, never. I don't know. I think that at this point, though, as much as I hate to say this, and I'm listen, guys, I'm a huge AJ Lee fan. She would get outclassed. Yeah. She get out and and that's with the these that's NXT the shows. with these with the NXT Revolution. She would get outclassed. Um, that's just my opinion. I'm I'm sorry, AJ Lee. I love you, but right now, I, I, there's it's a different style. Would she style get outclassed, or would her game be stepped up because she'd have actual competition? Touche. What I said the first time. Uh, moving on. Um, but you know what? There is. I am gonna make. We're gonna get in more into more with Nikki's record. Uh, Nikki or AJ's record uh, coming up here. Uh, Brandon, I definitely appreciate the compliment again, brother. Thank you. Um, WWE fan six nine one four one says, "I love that Charlotte, Becky, and Sasha are on the main roster, but all the WWE does with them is have random meaningless matches between three teams. Are there no storylines? Got to have storylines in wrestling. Is this what gets uh, fans invested? Pretty shitty revolution when there are zero th- when there are zero th- uh, zero storylines. Your thoughts? Well, I don't know. I think the storyline with the Divas right now is that it's." Three different teams, and you know what? In a way, the plastics versus the freaks versus the badasses. Hmm. To me, it looks more like race wars than anything else. Um, it does. So, it really does. So, and I hope everybody realizes that was a joke. But it's that's how they always separate, it and it's that's what drives me nuts about WWE sometimes. But I think that it it, it does feel. I will say this. I love everything about the Divas Revolution, but it does feel a little clunky with three teams. Um, there's a, a question that I'm going to tie in later on from somebody else with this, too. But I'll, And it's something that we forgot to mention. Um, there's a, a three-team, nine-diva elimination match at SummerSlam. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there should be a championship involved with this, too. Somebody else brought this up. We're going to get to that comment later on down the line. Um, but you know what? I will admit, I think that I, I, we, we, I, okay. we had this theory a long time ago that we thought the four horsewomen would come up together. And everyone called us crazy. This was, I mean, back at WrestleMania. And everybody called us crazy. We're idiots, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. And when they brought them up, Becky, or uh, not Becky, but uh, Bailey was hurt. I'm thinking, and I'm wondering if originally there was supposed to be maybe a five-on-five five match. Okay. You know, so where it was the horsewomen and Paige. And then maybe it would have felt like there was more direction. Um, but it does really feel like it's just three catty groups of women. Like it's, you know, although I love that we're finally getting great matches. I love everything about it. So I, you know, this is me nitpicking a little bit, Yeah. but there is a point to that. Um, you know, uh, let me see WWE fan. You do got a good point with that too. I mean, there's, it really just seems like it's just like three clicks in high school, just arguing. That's basically what it is. You know, um, now let me see. Uh, staying with uh, the page right here, uh, or with the page, yeah, we'll always stay with page. Staying with the Divas Revolution, uh, it is PCB page Charlotte Becky, and yeah. you know you were corrected on that one. Um, but uh, Rob said he likes Freak Show as well. Who else uh, corrected us on that one? Uh, let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. Steven Roberts, thank you, sir. Uh, and he also says Nikki's title run is meaningless to him because uh, she doesn't defend her title as much as AJ when she was champ. Paige, uh, Charlotte, and Becky group name is PCP, not uh, BCP. Uh, well, at least we were both wrong on yeah. one. I like that we're both. We should keep a counter once. Where it's like ding, ding, ding. every time we screw up, there should just be a counter about that. But um, 
So uh, I like Steven too. He's like, you know, now what do you think about that? Do you think she's defending it as much um, or as AJ did? Or, you know, what are your thoughts on that? I don't really think so because AJ really didn't defend it that much more often. Did she? I, I and not, Nikki's been hurt the past couple weeks. Yeah, there was... There was Nikki's a, I'll, had an injury. I'll say this. It, I don't... This is where I agree with Steven. I don't wear any of these title runs. And this is where all these title runs... I'm still having fun with it because it's fun to have, like, the, to play the Nikki or AJ side. Like, mm-hmm. it, 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 it's fun to do. But to me, the Divas Championship will never mean a damn thing to me. Yeah, a butterfly belt doesn't mean it. And no... and. I know that's unfair to say, and I, and I don't mean that in any way to disrespect any of the, the women that have held that championship, but I have to say that once they made that championship into a butterfly, you definitely saw what they wanted out of a champion versus what was there prior. Yeah. I mean, we, we used to actually, even when it was still the women's champ when Lay Cool had it, we still at least got good matches, mm-hmm. you know, or at least halfway decent matches you know Layla was that's when Layla was really starting to get in the groove yeah you know um I I, I and um um I'm so and I'm so sorry Michelle McCool was was excellent in the ring they had a woman's you know, table match yeah I mean there were things were start, but as soon as they changed it into that butterfly it was like this it means you're the Barbie doll girl yep, basically. A- and even in AJ's time I think that that was the case for you know so I mm-hmm. see I do understand a lot of the heat, but by the same token, though, think about Dean Ambrose's uh, United States run. He never defended that motherfucker, and that dude, and I, and I love Ambrose. He had that forever. That dude had it forever. I think he defended it like three times, and I know I'm saying that as a joke. I'm going to get corrected, I know, but um, it's, it is. It is. It's one of those where with WWE, it is, that's where I, that's where I laugh when they say, you know, um, when they say that records don't matter. If they didn't matter, they wouldn't be in such a hurry to get people off the records, you know, mm-hmm. i.e., when Brock Lesnar left and Randy Orton became youngest champion, yeah. i.e., how it seems like they're about to wipe, you know, wipe away AJ's name. You know, we all know that at the end of the day, they don't. And really, in any sport, rock records don't matter. I don't care what Babe Ruth did in nineteen whenever with a bunch of drunk white dudes. I don't care. That doesn't. <laughs> those records are meaningless to me. They're meaningless. They don't even count. So you know, it's always subjective to the time, and it just to me. The women's or the, uh, the the divas championship era was a dark cloud for women's wrestling. Um, I yeah. think a lot of great talent came in, saw what was going on, and left. I think Caitlyn is a great example. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kong, a great example. Um, you know, and I'm just I, I know there's more that I'm uh, Gail Kim. Uh, you know, there's names I'm forgetting, guys. You know, but uh, Shelly Martinez. There's we could go on and on. But I think that a lot of these women came in, they saw what was going to go on, and to me, the, the, the Divas Championship era will be the darkest era for women's wrestling in the history of wrestling. Okay. Wow. That's just that's, my personal opinion. That's rough. <laughs> it is rough. It, but think about it, though. That's rough. Think about it. Are we really ever, at the end of the day, going to look back and pull anybody that's held that, that championship out and say, game changer? Well, think of really how young, like, women's wrestling is, though. No, 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 no. A- including, let me get to, uh, let me see. I mean, they really didn't start mainlighting women fights until, like, the 90s. Like, 80s or 90s. This is where me and Delbert Rolton, I, if I mispronounce your name, brother, I'm so sorry. Um, this is where we are going to uh, agree to disagree with you. Um... He says he passed out, but yeah, Nikki Bella should break AJ Lee's record. She deserves it. Hell, when it comes down to divas, uh, when it comes to divas, I think Victoria could still wrestle her ass off. I remember back yeah. when she was in Glow. Who remembers that show? Now I feel old. This man right here, because in the eighties, I watched Glow. Glow, the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Yeah, but that was an all women's wrestling thing. I'm talking about like on the same stage as dudes, like in WWE. What, on uh, on the same stage, they had their own stage, Sam. This is and that's an era in the eighties. Women's wrestling, there was more to women's I've wrestling. I've seen then. the Glow documentary. I know what you're you know? talking about. Um, and then you go into the nineties. You know, in the nineties, still with Alundra Blaze, and then going over into WCW, you still had that. There, there was things going on. Breaking into the two thousands, we had Lita, we had Trish. You know, we had Victoria. We had there was women that could always go, and it's just that divas era. That butterfly belt. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's because they always treated mm. women like they couldn't go certain ways. That's so they couldn't do certain things because they're women. That's you the point. They're too delicate. And Their coming in, are delicate. coming in, AK Germany '96. Talk about great beer from Germany. 
we get an AK Germany 96. Of course, records don't mean much, but you'd think they'd have Nikki defend her title at least once uh, every every few weeks when they're hyping her title reign length so much. Sloppy booking that defies common sense and it makes the product worse. Now that I will agree with, and see, it would be different. And this is I and, and I and this is where I'm still where the record doesn't matter because I don't know how. I gotta think, but AJ wasn't doing a lot of defending either. I don't think that she was, because she um, was a heel. She was a heel champion yeah, for the most part. Yeah, it was just a heel that we all got behind. And and the the one thing I'll say is until the injury, now with the injury, I see they are milking it, and I think that's where we're getting where they're, you know, she may or may not break the record. And that's why, that's why this debate is so fun. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so with her being hurt, I see them, I see why they're, but her last title defense was at NXT in Japan. That is true. So a while ago. that that's been a while, mm-hmm. or and I keep calling it NXT in Japan. It, it's because that was the match tonight. I'm sorry, WWE Live in Japan. Thank you for correcting myself. You, get, you, you guys don't have to worry about it. That I did that the whole time because all I cared about was Balor and Owens. <laughs> oh well, what can you do? Um, all right, so let me see real quick while we still got some time. Um, we have. Let me see. Josh Musto Musto says, "Great review. What are your predictions for Seth Rollins versus John Cena? Predicts Rollins will win only for Sheamus to cash in, win the belt. Think Sheamus will move on the feud with Cena for the title afterwards. Rollins will feud with a returned masked Kane for the United States Championship." Hmm. Okay. Wow, that was detailed. That was. Um, that's actually. It's very detailed. Um. I, I mean, I don't think that's the direction they'll go, but I could. I'd be okay. Listen, anything with masked Kane, I'd be okay with. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they're still going to more, head more towards Triple H. But you know what, though? Maybe Kane is is in front of Triple H. Mm-hmm. Maybe he gets Kane first. Uh, you know, I don't think the United States Championship would necessarily be there. Uh, but I could see him having to go through Kane to get the Triple H, maybe. Well, yeah, I mean, he's part of the authority. You'd think that we if don't... Rollins would be going after Triple H, he'd, be have, he'd have to go through the rest of the authority as well. I don't know. We don't know that now because of the way that uh, the way that it's the way he got taken out. He can come back however he comes back. Mm-hmm. He can come back the Demon Kane. He can come back the Devil's Favorite Demon. He can come back however he can come back Corporate Slacks Kane. Maybe he's selling hot dogs again. Uh, maybe he's gonna come back like like uh, like Jericho. He's just gonna come out, not say anything, just walk around the ring, wave the people for a half hour, <laughs> and walk straight back. Funny. Who knows the Kane at this point? Um, no, I mean, I can definitely see, like I've said before, having Seth Rollins drop the title to Cena. That way, Sheamus can just cash in and take the title off him. That way, Cena's still U.S. champ, but doesn't have the WWE title. Right, right. I can see them doing that, but I would pr- I would prefer Seth Rollins to retain. Yeah, I don't know. This one's going to be... Tr- I'm going to have to think about this one. Um, I, I kind of... The heel in me does want to see Cena win, just to see everybody get, go nuts, I'll admit. Um... The fan in me wants to see Rollins retain just because I'm a Rollins mark. Uh, so I'm like torn. I'm like, oh, do I kind of want to see? I, you know, I don't want to see. Um, uh, Lewis Clark said he loved my Jericho shirt and loved your hair. Uh, thank you, brother. Appreciate all the um, um, digestive ceremony. I know who you are, but I'm going to use the name. And this is where we're going to tie in some Ambrose and stuff. He says he disagrees with Ambrose turning on Reigns. Thinks Reigns should turn uh, because Ambrose would be the more sympathetic babyface of the two. Think about it. Ambrose is the loner here. He's the weird kid with the only uh, with only one friend. Uh, he's the one with the aban- uh, abandonment issues. Uh, he's the little brother in this scenario. So wouldn't it create more sympathy uh, if he gets the guy if he's the guy to get screwed over by the guy that looks like a mercenary? And a lot of you guys agree with that too. Uh, Mark. Uh, yeah, I mean, I definitely see. like that idea. I just don't um, think that the WWE would turn Roman Reigns heel. Who else agreed with That's you? That's all. I mean, de- um, I'm definitely down with you guys in that idea, and I would love for that to happen because I'm I'm totally down with Roman Reigns with a heel turn. I just don't think WWE will do it because we talked about it before. WWE doesn't like to be proved wrong, and the fact that Roman Reigns can get over as a baby face. And Ryan, Ryan Taylor, my man, what's up? Uh, and you know what? And he actually he agrees too with it being Ambrose. You know what though? I can see it from that point, and I think I could work. Especially if we want to make him the, the the real outcast that we all latch on to. The kid that we all felt like we were. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, absolutely that would... I love it. I think that... And it would work. be a great way, love it or hate it, and they do use... Listen, they use our reactions whether we like it or not. And that fan throwing that thing, maybe that's a... You know... And it would be... Ugh, ugh. But still don't throw things, guys. That's not the way to get it. Yeah, don't throw um, things. Right? <laughs> Uh, but real quick, there was something else. Uh, Rowdy Puff Ray, what's up? Thank you. Enzo and Cass making an appearance. 
Don't see him being inserted in the match, but coming out to cut a promo afterwards, uh, or if New Day wins, coming out and giving him a beatdown. Okay. Let me see. see uh, who I else? Marcus, brother, what's that. up? He also likes to see, uh, he sees Enzo and Big Cass get involved somehow, both from the New York, New Jersey area. I think it would be awesome. Um, DDT, brother, I appreciate you guys. He said he's been a wrestling fan forever, been through the good and the bad in wrestling, uh, enter the internet. And in a way, that's why we want to bring the fun back, you know. Um, I'm going to save the rest of that comment, although I deep that, brother, that right here to me. Um, Sam will see. I know that she will appreciate it. Much love out in L.A. And that also means that you either love or hate the Raider references I make. So I, I don't know. I hope you love the Raider. Or, or either way, thank you. Greatly appreciate the comment, brother. Thank you. Um, AC said we're awesome, Sam. So, um, thank you. But his big thing was uh, DDT also did say, shouldn't, uh, shouldn't the Divas match be a title match? I... That's actually something I was going to bring up. I really would like to see this for the Divas Championship because it would, it would add another element where... But how would they do that for the Divas Championship being three on three on three? Well, You'd if... You'd have to have like a Divas Battle Royal. If Nikki's team... No, if Nikki's team wins, Nikki retains. Uh, if Nikki's team loses, whoever's last, you know, whoever's last Divas standing... There you go. Even if there's two women on, I mean, they could they could adjust it however they want to. They would book it so that there was only they they could book it in a way that so that there was only one diva left on each team. If Nikki Bella got eliminated and then it, there was left with two, there there's a way that they could do it. Um, I do Not feel like that the title three should be on, the line, on yes. each team. There's no way that the diva title could be on the line. I just feel like the sad part about this. In, in the only way, way I can see this moving into a diva title would be whoever's team wins. Someone from that team gets a divas gets a divas title shot, and then they have to fight each other for like the next couple weeks on the next pay per view, and then they get to face Nikki Bella, which I'm assuming will be Charlotte. And and that's Charlotte what I think too. Nikki. I think this is going to be used as much, as great as this is, and, and I and and I think that once we see the match, I think we're going to care less about the championship being involved. I really do because I I think that there was a tease, and I'm pretty sure, and I don't want to I don't want to say. I don't, I don't, I forget who it was. I almost want to say it was Walton, but I, I don't, want, I don't want to say that for sure. But someone basically said, "Wow, there must be, you know, almost like that's a lot of time to give somebody." I wonder if they're aware of that. And it was almost like, "Oh, we know. Like, mm-hmm. there's going to be these women are going to be afforded time to yeah. really show." So I think this is going to be really to set up who's going to face uh, Nikki at the following game. Mm-hmm. I that. really do. Um, you know, and but what do you think about Enzo? I like the idea that uh, what do we have there? Let me go back on here. Um, of Ra- Big Cass? Rowdy Puff Ray, yeah, I like the idea of I could see New Day, even though you know, then Titus and Titus and uh, Titus and um, um, Darren Young would obviously get their rematch, but I like the idea of New Day winning and almost grabbing the microphone and just cutting a ham promo of like we beat everybody, <laughs> we're the only ones, there's no one left, and then all of a sudden, you know, all of a sudden their music hits and Enzo and Big Cass come out and the place goes crazy. Yeah. I would love it. I, I, that's something to me when it comes to like a fantasy booking or like a, one of those moments when you think about it. Mm-hmm. I would pop. I would pop. I would pop for that. What yeah, I would definitely go crazy if the if Enzo and Big Cass came out at SummerSlam. Yeah, and either they came out to be in the match, they were added in the match, or they just did. Or the next a night promo on Raw afterwards, or the next night on Raw. Yeah. Either way, I would pop because I really want to see them on the main stage because I think their characters would work on the main roster. Guys, and, and all the love we got on Facebook, too. Thank you. And it's amazing how many views we got this week, guys. Uh, thank you so very much for, for everything. Um, thank you guys for all the comments. Thank you for everything. I hope we, you know, hope we cleared everything up. And you guys twist the arm a little bit. I think I'm, I'm team Reigns when it comes to who's turning it at SummerSlam. Not going to lie. But like her, I, cha- I, I flip my mind like this and that. Um, Sam, that. Sam, anything you have to say before, before we go? No, I just wanted to thank everybody for interacting with us for the second week. It's a blast, in a guys. Row. Thank you. And thank we're having you. so it's much fun doing this, and we're going to continue to do it. And yes. I hope that you watch Rob Review again just to give us more feedback and tell us how wrong we were. Yeah, yes, please. And, and that's why it's so enjoyable for us because when we rewatch it and I rewatch what we do, I go, oh man. I'm going to get it for this one. Or I'll, I'll look at her. The best is seeing her facial expressions when I say something she doesn't agree with. That's my favorite part because I don't see them when we – but that's for a different time. Um, so before we leave, just remember, ladies and gentlemen, you can't hit anyone uh, – you can't just simply tap anyone on the shoulder anymore. You have to hit them over the head with a sledgehammer.
Sooner or later, people are going to catch on to what we're doing here. Um, for everybody at WrestlingRumors.net, for Sam at LadyNexus13, I am Adam at AdamDaily13. Guys, wherever you're at in the world, no matter how you're watching us, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on WrestlingRumors.net, we appreciate you guys so much for spending some time with us, especially half hour. We love you guys, and we'll see you next week.